Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. Y'all are gonna have to bear with me this week. You can probably tell I have a cold or I'm getting over a cold. Still like really congested. I have a stuffy nose. Thankfully, all it was was a cold, but me and the kids have not been feeling too great the past couple of days. So I have to do the voiceovers for like all of the clips of this video. So it's going to kind of sound stuffed up like I do now. But I have some good recipes to share with you guys this week. So let's go ahead and get into it. Friday was the day that I went grocery shopping. So I like to keep things simple on those nights. So we just did a family favorite, which was spaghetti, meat sauce, and some garlic bread on the side. We of course used the Chef Shammy's garlic butter for that. On Saturday, my sister came over and we baked cookies and decorated gingerbread houses. So I planned a dinner that was pretty easy to put together, but still delicious. So we did hot Italian sliders. Usually I would just do one pack, but because she was here, I wanted to make sure there was enough food. So we did two packs and then we had enough for her and I and the kids to have lunch the next day as well. So I took some little slider buns, cut them in half, and then I started layering them with my meat and cheese. So I did ham, salami, and pepperoni on all of them, and then provolone cheese on all of them. And then the recipe that I was using called for red peppers and banana pepper slices. I left off the red peppers because nobody cares for those. Um, and then I just put the banana pepper slices on the ones that me and my sister would be eating because we do like those. And it was really, really good on there. And um, then I put the tops back on all of these and brushed it with some melted butter that I mixed some Italian seasoning into. Then this got covered with foil and I went in the oven at 350 and baked for 25 minutes with the foil on. Then I pulled it out, took the foil off and baked it for another five minutes without the foil so that it could get a little bit crispy on top. We just paired these sandwiches with some fresh vegetables for the kids and then my sister and I had salads and they were basically like Olive Garden salads. We did like the Olive Garden dressing, Parmesan cheese, some tomatoes, and then those banana peppers. Me and her ate that entire jar of banana peppers in two days because as I said, there was leftovers of these sandwiches and so we had them for lunch the next day and they were super easy to reheat. I just wrapped the rest of them in foil and then stuck them in the oven and they cooked I think for like 20 minutes on 350 they didn't get like burnt or super crispy or anything and that's how we warmed them up and yeah I would highly recommend this recipe I've been loving sliders lately they're just so delicious and easy to make and then here is the cookies and stuff that we made I will leave the link down below for this that we made it's a cookie puzzle and it was so fun to do we absolutely loved it and the cookies were delicious as well and then here are our gingerbread houses me and the kids did the small ones and my sister did the big one um yeah it was a lot of fun i didn't record us actually doing any of that but yeah we had fun sunday night i made instant pot sausage and shells so i started off by melting four tablespoons of butter in the bottom of my instant pot with it on saute this is a recipe that i've made many times it's one of my favorites from the instant pot cookbook um, by pressure luck or jeffrey eisner um, I will have the cookbook link down below as well as his YouTube channel and I'm going to list out my alterations to the recipe because I do change it just a little bit. But once all that butter was melted I added in some ground Italian sausage and some minced garlic and some dried minced onion. You're supposed to use shallots but I like never use that. Sometimes I'll use regular onion but this time I just use some dried minced onion and I just cooked that around for a few minutes kind of crumbled it up and it doesn't have to be fully cooked through because it will continue cooking when it goes under pressure. So once I had it to the doneness that I wanted and all crumbled up, I added in four cups of chicken broth, some Italian seasoning and a bunch of cherry tomatoes and then I stirred that around and then on top of that we're going to add our pasta and this time instead of using like the medium shells I actually used 
one pound of the really small shells these are the ones that you find like in a bag at the mexican grocery store so i added those on top and then just kind of press them down into the liquid and then we just top that with a bunch of spinach you're supposed to use like i think five ounces of spinach i just do a couple handfuls and then i put the lid on make sure it's sealed and because i used smaller noodles this time I actually cooked it for a little bit less time. I only cooked it for five minutes on manual pressure. Once it was done, I did a quick release. And when all the steam was released, I took off the lid, stirred it around, and then I stirred in some heavy cream, some borson cheese, and some like grated Parmesan cheese, the kind that comes like in the shaker bottle, a bunch of that, and then just stir it around till everything is melted. This recipe is delicious. It's probably my favorite recipe from the cookbook. I've made it so many times now and every time it's good. It's super filling and just so creamy. Yeah, highly recommend trying it if you have a Instant Pot. Monday night I made some baked pork chops and roasted potatoes. So I started off by cutting up a bunch of potatoes and then drizzling them with some olive oil. And then I used the Trader Joe's onion salt on them for the first time, which turned out really good. So I used some of that and some garlic powder and some pepper and then I just tossed the potatoes around in that and then they went in the oven on 425 and they took about 40 minutes to get as crispy as I wanted them to be. For my pork chops, I just laid them out on a sheet pan and then I brushed them with some olive oil and then I sprinkled them with a little bit of Badia Complete and some Tony's Creole seasoning and I did that on both sides. And then these went in the oven at 425 and they only took about 20 minutes. And I just served the pork chops and potatoes with a can of green beans on the side, seasoned with some chicken bouillon, some body of complete, some pepper, some garlic powder, and some butter. Tuesday night, I made some sheet pan chicken fajitas. And instead of like buying some bell peppers, I just used the mini sweet peppers that I always buy for the kids. So I wasn't buying two different things because sometimes they don't eat all these peppers and then they end up like going bad. So I was like, I'll just use some of the peppers for the uh, fajitas and it turned out great. So I just picked a couple of each color, just sliced them up thin like you would have for your fajitas. And then I also cut up a red onion because I was trying to use that up. And then I also cut a lemon in half because we're going to squeeze some lemon juice on it as well. So for my chicken, I decided I wanted to use these chicken tenders that had been in my freezer for a little while. So I needed to go and remove the little tendon piece on each piece because it's kind of hard and nobody really likes to bite into that when they're eating. So I've showed this trick before. You take that little tendon piece and slide it between the like tongs of the fork and then you just pull it with a paper towel and it just like 
pulls out slides out real easily and I do this anytime I make chicken tenders now whether I'm cutting them up like I am here for fajitas or I'm actually making like chicken tenders no matter what I always remove that tendon now because I just I never used to buy chicken tenders before because I hated that part but now it's just like so easy to remove so I just sliced up this chicken into good sized pieces for fajitas and then added that to the bowl with the vegetables the seasoning I'm using here is a chili lime seasoning packet that I found at Aldi. So I'm adding that to my bowl with my chicken and veggies along with some olive oil and the juice from both of those lemons. I'm going to toss it around really good and then put that on a sheet pan and then this baked at 425 for about 25 minutes. To go with our fajitas, I just had some cilantro lime rice that I pulled from the freezer. I let it thaw in the fridge and then to reheat it, I put it in a microwave safe bowl, put a wet paper towel over the top and just microwave it for about like one to two minutes and it gets hot. And yeah, you can freeze rice and it turns out great. But we just topped our fajitas, sour cream, taco sauce, cheese. Um, the kids like theirs pretty plain, like just cheese. But uh, yeah, that was our dinner for Tuesday. Wednesday night I made shrimp fried rice. This is definitely a family favorite, even sometimes not even with shrimp, sometimes chicken fried rice, but this time I was doing shrimp because I was really wanting some shrimp fried rice. So I started off by just heating up some sesame oil and some olive oil in my pan. And then once that is hot, I'm gonna go ahead and cook my shrimp in that oil with a little bit of garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Once the shrimp was done, I removed it from the pan, making sure to leave any of that liquid and oil behind. And then I added in a little bit more sesame oil. And then I also added in the whites of the green onions. Mine are frozen, so I just kind of added them in there first for a little bit to like let them thaw out before I added it in my rice. But if they're fresh, you could just add them in there and then immediately add in your rice. I just kind of tossed them around for just a minute. And then I added in my cooked cold white rice. You want to make sure you cook this ahead of time because it makes your rice turn out way better than if you just like cook white rice and have hot rice and then try to make it into fried rice. It doesn't turn out great if you do it that way. I've tried it before in the past and I learned from that mistake. So make sure you have cold cooked white rice. So then I just toss that around in the oil with the onions and then I'm going to season it as well with some garlic powder, a little bit of salt because we are going to be adding soy sauce to this which will salt it up a little bit and then um, some black pepper as well. And then I toss that around again, get it everything nice and seasoned and then I just let that cook through for a couple minutes, like get everything nice and hot. Thank you. 
Once my rice was heated through, I went in with some oyster sauce, some hoisin sauce, and some soy sauce. And I tell y'all every time, I do not have measurements for this. It's all just based on taste and color. I made it so many times now, I can kind of tell by the color of the rice, like if I added enough. I would probably say it's about a tablespoon of oyster sauce, a teaspoon of hoisin sauce, and uh, I don't know, a tablespoon or two of soy sauce. But I get all that in there and then I stir that around, make sure I coat my rice really well with all of that. And then once that's all nice and mixed throughout, I push my rice to the side and add in some frozen veggies. I do somewhere between a fourth of a cup and a half a cup, just depends on what I have on hand. And then I add some soy sauce to those veggies and kind of toss them around in the soy sauce to kind of flavor them themselves. And then once I get them tossed in that soy sauce, I will add them over into the rice. And then once I get them mixed into the rice, I will push my rice to the side once again and add in some eggs. I will whisk together four eggs with some salt and pepper and then pour them on the side that has no rice on it. I prefer to cook my eggs like separate from my rice. You can do it in the pan like this because it kind of keeps it separate because if you mix in the liquid like eggs right away, it kind of like coats the rice and I just don't prefer that texture. I prefer the eggs to be cooked like on the side. So I will cover it and let my eggs cook most of the way through and then kind of scramble them on the side. And then once they are cooked, I will toss them in with the rest of the rice. And then we're pretty much done. You could stop here, but since we're doing shrimp fried rice, I will get my shrimp and toss that back in, taste it, see if it needs any more seasoning, um, maybe some more soy sauce. Usually I just put soy sauce on the table and if anybody wants any more, they can add it to their own bowls. But yeah, that is how I make my fried rice and my shrimp fried rice. Super simple and really quick to make. It doesn't take very much time at all. It comes together really fast and we love this. It's so good. Um, if you like fried rice, I definitely recommend giving it a shot at home. Thursday night I made crock pot chicken enchilada soup. So in the bottom of my crock pot, I've got some frozen chicken breast, about a pound. And then I added two cans of Rotel, one can of Mexican corn, or you could just do regular corn, whatever you can find. And then two small cans of enchilada sauce, one can of black beans. I didn't even bother draining them and rinsing them this time. I just added them in there just like that. And then I did three cups of chicken broth or three cups of water and the Nor chicken bouillon. That's what I did. And then I added in some minced garlic, some cumin, and some onion powder. And then I just stirred this all around, mixed it together really well, put the lid on it, put it on low for like eight hours is how long this cooked. After letting this cook for eight hours, I went in and shredded up my chicken. And then once my chicken was all shredded up, I added in a couple cups of cheese and just let that sit and melt for about five minutes. When we were ready to eat, we just topped it with a little bit more cheese. And then on mine, I topped it with some sour cream as well and some tortilla strips. And everybody else had their tortilla strips on the side so they could add it to it as they ate it because they didn't want them to get soggy. But yeah, this was delicious. We loved this. Definitely will make it again. I feel like I might have made it before, but I can't remember. It's good though. 
and chicken enchilada soup is always delicious and like taco soup like stuff like that we love those kinds of soups but that is going to be it for this week's what's for dinner i hope that you guys enjoyed it hopefully my stuffy nose wasn't too bad and hopefully next week i will be feeling much better but as always thank you guys so much for watching and i will see y'all in the next one bye